After being fully stacked last week, SpaceX has nowhere else to go but up. Ignoring Elon Musk's optimism, a company official recently also confirmed that it's now in a position to be real close to the next orbital flight test of its much-anticipated mega-rocket pending a launch license. So how soon exactly is the next Starship IFT? Let's find out in today's episode of Great SpaceX. Since Starship's first launch in the spring, SpaceX has been busy making updates and tests both to its Starship rocket as well as the infrastructure around the launch pad. They added a water deluge system at the base of the orbital launch mount to protect the pad from the damage seen during the first launch attempt. Teams also added a hot staging ring to the top of the super heavy booster to alter the way that the first and second stages of the rocket separate during its ascension. On August 25th, Booster 9 completed its second static fire test. The test saw the gigantic spacecraft ignite its Raptor version 2 engines while securely positioned atop the orbital launch mount at SpaceX's Starbase facility in South Texas. A few minutes after the test firing, SpaceX founder Elon Musk characterized it as successful on the social media network X, formerly known as Twitter. SpaceX later confirmed that all 33 Raptor engines ignited during the test and that all but two ran for the full six second duration. Previously on August 6th, B9 had already undergone its first static fire test. That hot fire test ended prematurely after 2.74 seconds. Moreover, four of the rocket's 33 main Raptor engines either did not ignite or shut down prematurely. Meanwhile, Ship 25 completed a six-engine test fire in June. Additionally, the rocket's ground systems appear ready. A static fire test, like the latest one for B9, is typically the final rehearsal for a rocket before it takes flight. The ground systems and propellant handling are all operated like a normal launch following test like you fly procedures. It's an opportunity to ensure that the rocket and ground systems perform as intended. Yesterday, all Starbase employees concentrated together and took a photo op at the launch site. This could be a sign that SpaceX has completed all repairs and upgrades for Starbase's Stage Zero. Hopefully we'll see those images soon, provided by SpaceX. In any case, all of this confirms that the hardware for Starship's second OFT is ready, only the software remains. Like aircraft, no flight can happen until the agency that governs the skies gives the approval to fly through them. This license simply permits SpaceX to launch Starship. When it gets released, it'll be one of the final checklist items of regulatory approval to launch. Every rocket launch needs a launch license, but due to the unproven nature of Starship, much more goes into determining if Starship is safe to fly. To check that off the list, SpaceX recently laid out its plans to remedy problems found during its explosive test flight of the Starship spaceship and Super Heavy booster in April to move forward with another flight this year. The company has already taken 57 of the 63 corrective measures, including reinforcements to the launch tower and pad system, and adding a flame deflector. SpaceX said it has successfully tested the system several times. The FAA now needs time to review the report and determine what fixes still need to be tested. With significantly accelerated progress, it is hoped that the FAA won't prolong its decision excessively as before. Overall, Starship could be ready to launch this month, and signs indicate that SpaceX is getting very close to being ready. While it is an exciting time, the possibility of seeing weeks-long delays is still very likely. However, we are closer than ever before. But that's just how the space industry is. There's always a waiting period. In fact, after many delays during a September 11th panel at Euroconsult's World Satellite Business Week, executives of the three launch companies, including Ariane Space, Blue Origin and United Launch Alliance said they are getting closer to their vehicle's first launches. These three companies have multi-billion dollar contracts to launch Amazon's Project Kuiper Constellation. Tori Bruno, president and chief executive of ULA, noted that the company had planned the inaugural Vulcan Centaur launch for this spring, 
but delayed it after an incident during a test of a Centaur upper stage where hydrogen fuel leaked from the stage and ignited. The company said in June it would modify the Centaur to increase the thickness of part of the stage to correct the problem, pushing that inaugural launch to sometime in the fourth quarter. The replacement Centaur that will be used on the first launch is in final assembly, he said, having passed a pressure test that qualifies the changes made to correct the problem seen in the earlier test. We'll be shipping the vehicle out to the pad in November, and I expect to fly the Vulcan in December. Jarrett Jones, senior vice president for New Glenn at Blue Origin, also said the company is still working towards the first launch of that rocket in 2024, but did not offer a more precise time frame. The first flight vehicle will arrive at the integration facility by the end of the year, followed by integrated hot fire tests. Blue Origin is planning multiple launches of New Glenn in 2024, but he didn't disclose details about the manifest. We intend to meet our contractual requirements in 24, he said. One of those contracted launches would be for NASA's Escapade Mars SmallSat mission, currently scheduled to launch in August of 2024. Stefan Israel, chief executive of Ariane Space, reiterated comments made by officials at a September 4th briefing, where they said the European Space Agency would set a target launch period for Ariane 6 after a long-duration hot-fire test of the core stage planned for early October. October. The test will follow a successful short-duration test on September 5th and an upper stage firing test on the 1st. That inaugural flight will come sometime in 2024, but he declined to be more specific. Things are progressing very well. We are very happy, he said. Just like New Glenn and the Vulcan Centaur, Ariane 6 had once planned initial launches in 2020. For all three companies, Amazon is their largest commercial customer and perhaps their most impatient one. Under terms of its Federal Communication Commission license, the company must deploy at least half of the Constellation by July of 2026, giving it less than three years to launch more than 1,800 satellites. The remaining satellites must be in orbit by July July of 2029. Well, good luck to them. And for the last bit of today's episode, Russia is launching its first crewed Soyuz of the year. That's right, on Friday, two Russian cosmonauts and a NASA astronaut are scheduled to launch on the current iteration of one of the oldest operational rocket families, the R-7. The only other such family is the Atlas, which had its first launch just a few months before the inaugural R-7 rocket launch back in 1957. Both of these rocket families are capable of carrying crews, which is quite remarkable, right? Oleg Kononenko, Nikolai Chubb, and Laurel O'Hara will undertake a mission similar to SpaceX's Crew-7, which began a few weeks ago. They'll relieve the crew of the MS-22 and embark on a six-month stay in space. However, this crew handover means a little bit more than Crew-7's, as the MS-22 crew has been in space for nearly a year, a mission that was not originally intended. MS-22 will actually return to Earth during MS-23 due to a coolant leak caused by a micrometeorite impact last December. To address the need for a replacement Soyuz capsule, the crew of MS-23 was reassigned to MS-24, while their previous spacecraft served as MS-22's replacement. Then, MS-22's mission was extended until September of 2023, giving its crew an almost year-long stint in space. That being said, this marks Russia's first crew launch of 2023, while they typically conduct only two to three such launches annually following the coolant leak incidents on both MS-22 and a subsequent Progress cargo spacecraft, the nation has been relatively quiet regarding any commercial missions using Soyuz rockets. And that's all, folks. If you want to support our channel and get access to exclusive content, please consider becoming a patron by clicking the link in the description below. We appreciate your generosity and your passion for space exploration. As always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and until next time, keep looking up.